Alright. Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Bears and Dragons, where a bunch of us nerdy ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Thank you. Uh, last time, uh, what happened last time? You know. Oh, he had perfectly good reason. I mean. Maybe not to you, but it was perfectly good reason for him. Let me talk to him a little bit. mentioned that it was all part of his plan. It's not more logging. Did I put in my own? I did not. So what are you going to do with them? You know, you, you Roderick knocked them unconscious and uh, dra drug them back. He tied them up. No way, he's still alive. He's got one hit point. Oh, he he's 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 at he's at one HP. You guys woke him up and, and talked to him, so Well, you questioned him in front of everybody. Roder Roderick chased after him as he was running off.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe uh, Roderick was on the ceiling the entire time. He's awake. Oh, I'm, I'm pulling up too. He has a minus three. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. He gets advantage. <laughs> oh, well, he it technically rolled this at advantage five and seven, so we'll stick with that. He failed either way. Uh, hold on. Well, uh, obviously, it's for for obvious reasons. I am the living incarnation of uh, Din Carson. Oh, he's a devil god. Darrow. They're not quite a dwarf. Um, Prince Darendel is a, uh, Quagoth, a Quagoth, and he c- claims that he's a elvish prince, but Peter has not said anything about this before. Din Karazan. Let me, let me put it in the chat. D-I-I-N-K-A-R-A-Z-A-N. Not familiar with Dick and on, right? Yeah, religion check. Oh, shit. <laughs> Somewhere in your religious teachings... I don't know where, but somewhere along the lines, there was a book about gods of the Underdark. Um, you remember in the Pantheon of the Darrow, there is Din Karazan, an avatar of murder. A, a god of murder, essentially. You rolled. Uh, oh, well, Cyro knows this. In a, in a book. <laughs> in a book somewhere. You had a lot of. You had a lot of. Uh, in your studies, one of the things was religious, religious beings, and and, and one of the books talked about the gods of the Darrow, and then Karazhan being. Being a the Daryl God of Murder. No, why would I? 
As I am a divine being. <laughs> this is all my plan. Sure. Yeah, you think he's telling the truth, or at least the truth as he sees it. Only a strength check. Athletics. Roll again because you have your asshole arms out. Oh, let's give you an advantage. There you are. You are you you are using your wisdom, right? Yep, that is my wisdom. Uh, All right. So 
Roderick uh, walks up, probably a grim look on his face, to Pupito, who's smiling, looking all friendly like, giggling to himself. Holds out his arms and how many uh, arms? Just two extra arms? Okay. These draconic arms go. Grabs the head, head, and just rips it off. Like there's no like snapping of neck or anything. It just comes right off. Roderick, you're feeling great. Like you had a nice full meal. Just after the, the as the head was coming off, you could just feel it. Just mm, like a great juicy steak, or whatever your favorite food is. I mean, I'm not gonna say. Okay, so this is about an hour. This is an hour into to the day. Uh, Roderick is ready for bed again. <laughs> it's he has the itis. Yeah, you during the long rest, and then you woke. Yeah, you you woke up. Mm -mm. Oh, this is after. You woke up and found Barrows missing. You went looking for Barrows. You found him dead. So you're taking a nap. He's like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I'm not questioning it. Don't, I don't want to know. No.
you, you never apparently you never noticed when when Roderick would tap some phosphorescent mushrooms and they would suddenly go out. All right, all right, Lasseter, roll me a uh, d20. Just d20. Cool. And roll me a perception check. Having gone to bed earlier than normal after a few encounters, uh, you didn't really make up, make much of. Everybody disappeared from my roll 20. <laughs> No. The website. <laughs> yeah, your connection to the server has been interrupted. Uh, in any case. Um, so this would be the equivalent of going as a, at a slow pace. Second watch. We are. Our connection to the server has returned. Oh. I forgot. I. Want some background music for Yeah, somebody introduced me to this one. <laughs> that's a, a that's a, another game. That's not streamed live on twitch.tv slash windgen. <laughs> and post it to the Cubs Out Loud YouTube channel. Anyways, moving on. Uh, who's second watch? Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me a d20. Try rolling it on. Oh, 
What was it? I'm not on anybody's characters. Five. Okay. Roll me a perception check. You perceive everything. Uh, you got a 21. So during your watch, uh, during your watch, you notice the glow of the phosphorescent mushrooms kind of dim and grow back a lot brighter. It's kind of like this slight pulsing. Otherwise, it's just uneventful. Yeah, it's very pretty. Third watch. Okay, roll me a d20. Uh, it did not show, but you can tell me what it was. It was a 12. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, not really. I, the, to go into World 20, it has to be on the same computer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's because of the uh, Beyond 20 extension. That's why that happens. Um, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Uh, during your watch, you don't notice anything. Really, it's nice, quiet in the under dark. Fourth watch. The final watch. Roderick, roll me a d20. All right, roll me a perception check. You notice the phosphorescent mushrooms seem to have this slight pulse to them. They dim a little and go back to full strength. But that's all. On the ceiling. <laughs> Everybody wakes up to Roderick just just circling around the, <laughs> the cave. And, and I mean like vertically, not horizontally. <laughs> I mean, you you've been you've been traveling with Roderick for twelve days now. Um, can you really be surprised by this? This is normal. <laughs> you, you just go. Huh. <laughs> He's gonna watch. And. And by the way, you lost the person who really knew the perfect way to get to Grackle Stook um, with Pupita. Uh, some of the other Underdark denizens kind of know the way, but like your deep known friends really just know how to get to Blinden Zone. Still knows, doesn't know anything. Rant isn't from the Underdark. <laughs> he has no clue. Uh, Sarah has a vague idea, and he still wants to get to another light grove, and he 
feels like he knows which way that is. So you got two people who wants to get to the, the right grove. Stool, because that's his home, and uh, Sarah wants to go there, too. In your head, you hear, thank you. By the way, that thing Roderick did was kind of gross. Roderick's kind of scary. I'm glad he's on my side. <laughs> Only Lassiter hears this. <laughs> I need to remind myself again. Oh. Oh, no, I, I chose that. Oh, that's right. So, Roderick, uh, one thing you do notice while doing your exercise during your watch uh, is uh, you see this little gold, you suddenly see this little gold pseudo dragon um, sleeping on top of Lassiter's head. He curls up and goes back to sleep until Lassiter wakes up. Lassiter, you wake up with a uh, something on your head. You hear you hear a little squawk in your ear. You have in your, your your head head you see this like you 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 get this image in your head of this big old uh dragon uh roaring in your head trying to wake you up <laughs> the the pseudo dragon kind of flutters uh, out and, and kind of flutters in front of you and kind of tries to mimic what he was sending into your to your brain brain ah! so the dragon comes and and sits uh, just sits on your shoulder and just kind of like curls around your neck. Uh, he sends you a feeling which sounds like a uh, yes. Uh, you also sent he gives you a feeling of no. Uh, he sends you kind of the emotion of like, like help, like, like he's, he's there to help. You, then you get this image of a dwarf you remember seeing in your drunken stupor one night. Yeah, you, you get the uh, uh, name in your head of Little Borkad. Oh, 
LB for short. Little, little gold uh, pseudo dragon comes and and kind of like flits over to each one of you and kind of like uh, uh, sniffs at you and, and he comes over to Roderick and kind of like backs up a little bit, bit kind of glances at, at Lassiter and gives a little head tilt. He flies over to the Lasseter and curls around his neck again. Just kind of like the whole, like, like you ever had, like, your cat just kind of, like, rests on your shoulders, like, behind your neck? It's kind of doing the same thing. And you head off. Your drow friend, Sarah, says, says, I know the way to Neverlight Grove. I can sense the direction that I must go. I mean, he is a drow, so he's probably well traveled. And what sort of pace are you taking in your underdark travel? Just a nice normal pace. Not too fast, not too slow. It's kind of nice. Still, still recovering from from that meal yesterday, Roderick. Yeah. Mm. I honestly, the first time I ever heard the term itis. I, I hated it so much. I still do. But I'm also living in Texas, where it's commonly the way it's referred to. And so I just kind of ended up adopting it. <laughs> the itis. Which is, which is like, like food coma, is essentially what it is. I don't know. I I learned it from a white woman during one of my 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 training classes years ago uh, here in Austin, Texas. So I thought it was also a Texan thing, or or at least a Southern thing, or something. Yeah, it's fine. It's good. It's fine. I mean, this is America. We are the melting pot. Or at least we try. It doesn't necessarily help very good, very very much. But 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 we try. That's why I grew up in in the Midwest. It's like we're America, the the the, the Earth melting pot. And I'm like, yeah, you're trying to melt like oil and water or something like that. Sometimes, 
sometimes you get the nice emulsification where they actually start mixing, but sometimes <laughs> they keep themselves separate. It's some somebody split the holidays, that sort of thing. Uh, this is really bad fondue. Um, anyways. <laughs> you really shouldn't use mozzarella and cheddar. It does not mix well. Anyways, I don't know. I'm just throwing out things. Moving on. We're going to Norb Pace. Uh, whoever wants to actually, let me even do this with Seraph too. All right. Go ahead and uh, roll me a survival check. At, a, at advantage, because Sarah is helping you. Uh, nope. Uh, apparently, Sarah isn't much help. Uh, yeah, um... Everybody give me a perception check. Yeah, you got an 18. Not really. You're all you're all together. Yeah, yeah, you're on the opposite side, side of the 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 group from, from Roderick. Uh, Roderick and, and uh, Leaf, you swear you that was just the place that you were sleeping this morning, and this was like three hours later. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Leave a trail. But it, uh, Elith just uh, looks at Sarah and says, uh, "You can sense uh, where this is, or where we're intending to go, right?" Although I have to admit that's kind of creepy. But can you at least point the direction of where we're trying to go? And and Sarah points in a general direction, and she goes, "Well, let's go in that general direction. The dark lake." We're still on the opposite side of the dark lake, I assume. So we'll want to go around. Uh, Eldith uh, does help out to resume your normal pace, and you seem to actually be making progress. With a little, even this time with, <laughs> and this is with Sarah's help. Uh, now, um, uh, Gage, roll me a d20.
Same thing. No, we're still trying to figure that out. Uh, now I need you to roll me a second d20. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Uh, you come to, uh, as you're uh, coming through a passageway, you can do another uh, to your breast sort of passageway. It's dark as all hell. Uh, there is no phosphorus mushrooms, uh, so there is no darkness or no light. Does anybody have any light themselves or need it? <laughs> Blinds. You, it, you can essentially sense anything, anything within that. But you do not. You're blind sight. So Haley has a torch. Uh, I think everybody else has dark vision, so. So he's got a nice little little torch there. Um, go ahead and uh, everybody roll me a perception check. Or just a hundred will be fine. No. Oh, you do slash roll, not roll slash. And you could do, I think you could just do slash R too. There we are. Nice. You crit on one of those, but you did get quite a few uh, uh, critical fails. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, as you're traveling along, you come to a slightly open area and you see a group of Duragar. Uh, but they've got backpacks on uh, and uh, by the garb, they don't look to be like fighters or anything. They've got their weapon they've got weapons on them for you know protection i mean standard arc everything but uh they've got backpacks uh, uh they've got a cart cart and uh, it looks like the cart could be folded down like on the side to have kind of a table and uh, they uh, spot your group coming through with the light. It says, hey, you hear some um, buttering in, in under com common. And they stop and they quickly run around the cart. And then they kind of like fold down one side and pop up a, a little awning um, at, at the top. A couple of them run in and, and get behind this now open area on the side side of the car it says ah oh, welcome welcome my friends you look to be some free, uh, some travelers do you have anything to trade oh let me see what you have and maybe i have something for you We could say during one of your rests you did that. Yeah. So you know that's just how they took it. So I believe Leaf took that. So I don't know if Leaf wants to give that up, though. The uh, feather token? The feather token tree. Hmm, well, uh, unless you have coin, uh, I could probably take some of this off your head, so this would be good for scrap metal. Um, uh, well, I, I have a few things here. I've got the, the amulet. Uh, I've got a very nice net here. Uh, I've got two healing potions. Uh, this one is uh, more powerful than the other one. They're two separate ones. This... If you ever get to the Dark Lake and need to go diving, this will help you very much. Uh, I also have have this scroll. Uh, it's uh, not a very powerful spell from my understanding. I don't know if I spelled I'm not a spellcaster or anything. I just uh, ended up finding it. Uh, I believe it says something like Eldritch Blast. Ah, this is very special. Is the amulet of... Uh, I actually do not know. It just was very pretty. It's finely crafted item. Item, we think it's from an old empire or something. Uh, absolutely, but don't take it away. Yeah, yeah. If any of those was an upgrade, you can take one. Uh, he will, he will purchase some for, he will, for a half price. Yeah. 
So you, you get some gold. Ah, see, since she's helping me out by identifying that amulet, instead of instead of half what they normally we sell these for, I'll do it for seventy five. So it's three quarters price instead of half price. Something like that. Uh, yeah. Ten minutes and six seconds later, while Roderick is uh, doing his transaction and converting uh, all the equipment to gold, uh, Syra, you uh, identify as a plus one amulet of the devout. So Lassiter could attune it. But you would have to be able to purchase it. Uh, let me double check on something, something here. I did not expect that to be this to be rolled, so I was not 100% prepared. I admit. <laughs> That's just called an amulet. <laughs> you can get that at, at, at any, any temple. Uh, come on. Sapphires. It is, oh, it's only uncommon. Well, that's good. Uh, I'm selling this for 400 gold pieces. Being what it is. Magic items don't come around every day. You don't expect this to be cheap, do you? Or roll me a persuasion check. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're, so you're just going to intentionally fail. <laughs> okay. Oh. I get plenty of prayers. Why would I want to? Like, what God do you do you worship for? Ah, you do have a good idea there. Hmm.
Yeah, four hundred right now, but they, they, they're negotiating by uh, doing a job. You do have the four hundred. Uh, where, 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 where would you, are you, you people look for the one thing, why, why the hell are you in the underdark, but, or the seven hells are you in the underdark, or nine hells, excuse me, numbers, different places, worlds, anyways, uh, so you need some money in order to help out, you're trying to go to a what, a grackle school, or Okay, so here is something you can do. You can see um, my brother, uh, Jazim. Just learn out names here. I'm, gonna, I'm totally going to forget any of this. So if anybody ready. If you go towards the Dark Lake, which is that way, and he points in, into a direction, nearby is some a tomb that nobody has yet been able to explore or at least come back alive. In there, we believe there is treasure. If you bring back whatever it is, I will provide you this for your adventure. Oh, yes. And, 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 uh, when you have to go into the tomb, if you just follow around the dark lake, you'll, you can't miss it. That's the thing, we don't know what's inside. We just believe that it's there. Well, then you'll probably be dead. No, come back and return the, return the amulet. All we ask is for items. Any gold you can keep. It means you could spend that at, the sh at Jazim's shop. I am Rashad, by the way. Rashad. Pleased to meet you, Roderick. Oh, I know this thanks. Very weird for someone like you. Yeah. Who am I to, to argue about that? <laughs> He gives you directions. It's actually, apparently, you're, you've actually been not that far from the Dark Lake during your travels. Or at least here, you're not that far. And apparently the tomb's just like right there at the edge of the Dark Lake. I give you the amulet if you agree to to the contract. And then you go, you dive in, get whatever gold might be there for yourself, 
and any items that are there, you return to Jazim and Grackle Stook. Just follow the dark lake it, that way, and like you get to the dark lake and turn left. It's basically just follow the dark lake from there. Uh, little cave. It has a couple of couple of statues uh, on either side of it. Uh, don't worry, statues don't do anything. We've tried. We've been able to get past that, but we did not want to spelunk. We sent a few people in there and they never returned. Ah, yes. He, he uh, disappears from the counter. You hear some... He pulls a, he, all of a sudden this pack comes uh, on on top and another pack and another pack. It just is, it's not big packs. It, it just ha has a little basically he puts on three climbers kits um, or actually jet engineers kits. Uh, these should help, although they will cost you really only like three copper. So it, they're they're not that expensive at all. Uh, he had three Dungeoneering packs. Yep. Textures. You're also strong because of your wisdom. You, you, you hear in your your head a little voice say, Shushar and I can stay outside. Guard at the entrance, I suppose. Yeah. You guys go in and they stay out without. And guard the entrance. You go to the entrance of the cavern and you see little icons appear above their heads when you talk to one of them. One of the options that are provided is uh, form a party. <laughs> Those who play Final Fantasy XIV and have made it to Shadowbringers Dungeons will understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> who are the ones that you trust to go in with you? <laughs> Uh, Eldeth and Ront wanted to, but he get, kept getting blocked by other people in the head, and actually, uh, during the initial fight, Ront was knocked out a few times while he was trying to fight. He didn't have a weapon, but... In other words, let's not have PCs with us. Or NPCs. <coughs> You, you're like I don't. We don't need a full party. Just a light party will do fine. Yeah, you can probably. Uh, you would have to. Uh, marching there, you wouldn't be able to attune to it, but but you could spend an hour beforehand to to attune to it uh, before you guys entered the tomb. Just make sure everything's up to 
uh, uh, ready yourself. You haven't seen her suddenly stop and not do anything for a while. She's just quiet. <laughs> Mainly because DM doesn't want to try and, try and act like Haley. So after going through a few corridors following um, Josh's uh, uh, instructions, uh, you f find, you go, you come out of a cave to a n nice wide open uh, space where you see uh, black, just what looks like black water uh, with a few glowing spots phosphorescent algae uh you're able to you take a right and uh I'll walk along the, the shoreline until you come to a cave which has two statues next to it which looks you're not sure what they are uh, some sort of humanoid beings of probably lost forgotten time. Mm -hmm. You ritually cast it and the statues are not magical. Yeah, sure. You do uh, suddenly hear a soft feminine voice sounds out in your mind, faint and distant. Hello? Is someone there? Oh, please, I need help. I've been trapped in the dark for so long, so very long. Please, won't you help to free me? probably can't see a thing. Alright. So we got thing uh, 
Oh, oh, nope, not that one. Walter, Snyra, Roderick. Am I missing anybody? One, two, three, four, five. Where do I have? Do we have seven? No. Oh, six. Six, because of Haley. So let's get a uh, marching order to the entrance here. Oh, your owl was already there. <laughs> I see. In the upper left. God damn it. Oh, hold on. Well, what was your dark vision, Roderick? Thanks. <laughs> Um, oh, that's not the setting I want. Yeah, this is it. Did you delete your token? <laughs> Long. Vision, night vision, save, okay, there you are. Uh, you should have vision, but what's your uh, dark vision, Lester? So can't see yourself, Leaf. Can you see my ping? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, you should be back at the map now. You can look now. Still can't see anything. Uh, I don't see you looking at the screen, Lazder. I mean, you probably saw a bunch of diff separate tokens. Yeah, yeah, they're they're the I I accidentally moved you to the to the token page. It's fine. But now you should be at the back at the tomb. No. All right. Oh. All right. You should you should be at marching order. All right. Let's try this again. Okay, that's that's because you're on a different page. Uh, now back at the tomb. I don't know what's going on with the token. Uh, all 
right, hold on, let me try something quickly. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's a Haley. Where did we go? All right, Leaf, can you see anything now in the upper left? Oh, damn it. All right. I'm gonna have to do this differently. Here we go. Oh, maybe that was it. Your your thing was being slow. All right, I'm totally just getting rid of dynamic lighting. Yeah, it should be off. Okay. Everybody can see now. So as you uh, enter, uh, you see a stone diorama which stands to the right of the entrance. Uh, some, a vista of fantastic floating cities covers the wall to the left of the entrance. The right of the entrance looks like you had uh, some sort of noble surrounded by tenant slaves and other trappings of wealth and power. Across from the entrance, uh, empty stone torch. Sconces flank a uh, dusty staircase, which descends 20 feet to a landing. That be light. They are now lit. Well, go ahead and roll me a history check. Not sure. Boo.
you see a uh, plaque on the landing. Oh, it's just a stone of some sort with some designs on it. I'm assuming Gage is following. All right. Well, I can just do. Whoop. Oh, that didn't do the reveal that I wanted. There we are. In this room, you see a bunch of uh, dusty taps, shreds of dusty tapestries, which lie scattered across the floor. Freezes on the on the walls are defaced with deep gouges, making them unrecognizable. And you see a stone table type thing, gouged and cracked against one wall. Sure. I thought you can tell. Um, no, or Slyre can tell. Uh, Laster, uh, you don't see anything specifically of what you're looking for, uh, but you do recognize that these gouges and scratches look to be relatively recent. You also do notice after being thinking, oh, this is relatively recent. You look at the dusty floor for tracks and you don't see any. The only footprints you see are yours. Well, the parties. You don't see anything? No, it's a good thought. <laughs> Roger runs up the well to check. They don't. They they don't look anything special. Just kind of uh, wooden doors. Lasseter does not like these characters, so he would like to, <laughs> to die. <laughs> Probably not the case, but. <laughs> or he's just a player that likes to cause trouble. Talking to old men is not bothering anyone. <laughs>
Inside you find the four sarcophagi. You just looking at it or what are you, what are you doing? As, as you touch the lid of these sarcophagi, of which has, the lids have an image of a robed human figure in repose etched on them, carved on them, you hear uh, <gasps> and. Now, if I do this correct, I can do this correctly. Here we are. I need everybody to roll me initiative. Absolutely diddly squat. All right. You got everybody's rolls, right? All right, so what does your owl do? Gage will have advantage uh, once he... All right, Roderick. Twenty one. Uh, we'll hit. That does hit, and that's with your normal arms, I'm assuming. Yeah. Assuming, uh, which your fist goes right through their spectral form. It, it, you felt some resistance, but it didn't seem to do as much as you would think it would have done.
but it doesn't seem to be holding its corpor incorporeal shape or, or its, its shape uh, as as much. Anything else? All right, Leaf. Sure, and you can do that from range, so you don't have you didn't have to move. Yeah, because you technically, because you're next to it, you would have disadvantage. Hmm. Yep, that'll hit. All the damage. It does seem to slow as it goes through the uh, specter. Uh, actually, actually, it, it does seem to slow, but it does seem to like do more damage than uh, Roderick's fists. Because it is magic, so. Yep. That'll hit. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. All right. The specters turns. Roderick, one will try to suck out your life. Uh, Twenty hits you, right? All right. And let me switch the spot at roll damage so I can have a look. Go ahead and do that. Uh, Taking 10 necrotic. Uh, and I need you to make a, a constitution saving throw. Uh, your maximum hit points also reduces by 10. All right. We'll do that. All right. And attack on Haley. This time I'll let you guys see it. That will miss. Attack on Gage. Gage, I'm assuming 21 hits you. Uh, no, because it's a melee attack. All right, take nine necrotic damage and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. All right, you're fine. Well, besides the fact that you took. The specter will come up to you, Leaf. And I'm assuming 23 hits you, Leaf. I need you to roll me a, or uh, take seven necrotic damage and I uh, need you to make me constitution save throw. Hmm? Your maximum hit points are uh, reduced by seven as well. No, you just took seven damage, but now you cannot be healed at all because you're already, you're at your new maximum because your maximum hit points went down by seven as well. Wow. 
Lassiter. Okay. Another hit. Ooh, I've cast in too. All right. Uh, describe what your uh, your guiding bolt looks like. He's a platinum dragon. Glow. It was kind of like ba baby blue laser beam. You know, you know how like fluorescent light lighting looks has this kind of like slight bluish tint to it, which is one of the reasons why people have glasses like mine, which have blue light filters. Um, this blinding uh, beam of of light with this slight yellowish glow coming off of it shoots out of Laster's hands and completely annihilates this specter. Haley. Haley is raging. Bubbles, bubbles coming off of her hair. Technically, I think that's the only one she can target. It fails. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, whichever she's. <laughs> Oh. It it seems to kind of like tickle it. You feel that if it was stronger, it probably wouldn't still not have dealt as much damage as you normally would think it. Mhm. Mm Mm -hmm. Nope. Oh, wait a minute. That's with the with the minus five, right? Yeah. Okay. No, that that hits. Seventeen, she swings uh, with the mastery of her, of her weapon and doesn't seem to do as much damage as she would expect. Anything else? Uh, probably not. Okay, Syra. Pew, pew. Mm. 
magic missiles uh, shoot out from your hand and uh, pelt the specter into oblivion. This is the one I rolled initiative on, so I'm just gonna gonna just X him out instead of delete him. Yep. <laughs> uh it doesn't do exactly the same thing as as regular magic missile i can't i haven't read it in a while it's from acquisitions incorporated <laughs> Have have you have you watched any of actual acquisitions incorporated? Yeah, it's acquisitions incorporated is based off of um, uh, a campaign that Penny Arcade does at uh, PAX, and uh, it started off with uh, uh, Chris Perkins was their DM uh, during their fourth edition days and uh, into fifth edition. Uh, but was eventually passed it over to Jeremy Crawford. And they had a couple of specials where uh, one of the other ones at the end. They're, it's it's great. It's Penny Arcade, so it's it's ridiculous, but it, it's great. All of that is true. Anyways, so that does the help action, I'm assuming. Okay. I just I just realized for some reason I don't have gauge on here, but that's okay. I'll <laughs> what was your initiative gauge? Oh. You were last anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's four. Okay. All right. Yeah, so ga gauge, go ahead and uh do what you want to do. You have advantage on the attack because Sova is helping you. Yeah, it's your turn. Yep. Yep. Go ahead and roll again, see if you get a crit. It, oh yeah, that would definitely hit. But you have advantage. Yeah, you, you have advantage because because Sova is helping you and you have advantage. Yeah, yeah. But you still hit in any case, so go ahead and roll damage from your short sword. Or you're just using a scimitar. All right, you swipe at it, and you feel resistance as you go through it, but um, it doesn't seem to do as much damage as you would hope. Anything else? I'm not sure, I'm not sure when you get extra attack, so that's why I ask. <laughs> One more level. Oh, so if you have a second weapon, you can bonus action it, yeah. Right. Yeah, you still have advantage. Go ahead and roll again. There we are. That hit. So you take you deal two damage. <laughs> yeah, two damage. Um, but yeah, yeah, just your offhand just kind of nicks it. Again, you think it would have done just a little bit more damage, but for some reason it didn't. All right, Roderick, because I'm assuming so that's going to continue to help, right? Mm. Yeah. 
you're not at a at a point where your fists are magical yet, right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I, didn't, I don't remember when that was. I know it just eventually. I don't see why not. You choose the fist you want to punch. If you're using your astral arms to punch, maybe you just keep your regular arms crossed and just punch with your astral arms. <laughs> that hits. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's looking very faint. It's a specter. <laughs> How do you describe it? Okay. That definitely hits. And it dissipates. Oh. Alright. Leaf. Only, yeah, one specter is still around. Yeah, I'll hit. All right. Yeah, it's not dead yet. Oh. Slippery little devil. You dodged it after being hit by the stone. It's kind of shifts out of the way. You you almost hit Sova. Almost. Didn't actually hit almost. <laughs> you you could easily incite that was not intentional. <laughs> Alright. Uh Spectre will attack gauge again. Uh, and miss, because I'm assuming the Nate will not hit you. Um, and, uh, Lassiter. Somebody has been watching Critical Role Season 2. <laughs> but, I... At this level, do you have another missile? Or or is that at five? Okay, just checking. Trying to help. Uh, you, after seeing the first one go, you're like, wow, I'm the shit. And you turn around and just your overconfidence, it, it's still kind of being wiggly. All right, Haley. All right, six save. Uh, fourteen. So it saved. Uh, okay. Uh, it seemed to take even less damage than you would expect. Okay. And she whiffs. It's a crowded room. She's being thrown off guard. 
I would assume that she would have gotten five feet closer, right? Syrah. Uh, I would say because Sova is still helping by distracting, trying to distract the specter, you would have advantage. I would consider that still helpful. That and that's just regular rapier damage, right? All right. It's faded. It looks like it's on the last legs. It didn't look like your rapier did as much damage as you would hope. Gage, can you finish it off? It's at the point where <laughs> where you could probably sneeze. Still advantage. Just something weird is just going on. It's Spectre. It you're in the underdark. You don't even know how you got here. You also could do weapon fighting. <laughs> you could try with your scimitar. Fan. <laughs> oh no! Are are the ladies distracting you on either side? Um, it, it's weird having this owl around. <laughs> Dice gods are not on your side. All right. I'm assuming Sova's helping. Yeah. All right. Ro Roderick. Is there anything called vertical flanking? I'm not sure. <laughs> so, how do you want to do this? So, Roderick goes uh, running and uh, I'll along the wall while above everybody and then just smashes down with his astral arm uh out uh goro from mortal kombat All right. So uh, I need, uh, if you're trying to move a lid, uh, uh, go ahead and give me a strength check and, or athletics check. Let's go with that. Uh, uh, I, I will say uh, uh, strength or 
athletics check. And I'm saying that specifically for reasons. She's just really mad and she tries to open the, the coffin lid and uh, basically throws off, off the lid. Alright, which one are you looking at? Okay. Alright, so... Inside that one uh, contains two gold bracelets, 50 gold pieces that are worth probably about 50 gold pieces each. And a ceremonial wand. Uh, made of chiseled ivory, probably worth about 25 gold pieces. Wait. Hold on. Amendment. That's actually the northwest one. Because technically north is this way. Okay. Here, here. Um, let me... Let, 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 let me... Let, let me do this. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. This is why it... Reveal areas. Here we are. Oh, you're... Yeah, no, I was reading the northeast one. <laughs> the northwest sarcophagus uh, contains an onyx ring worth 50 gold pieces and silver necklace set with two... Azurites and a carnelian worth 250 gold pieces. All right. There you go. Okay. Southeast. Or no, that's the southwest. Southwest. Uh, you see a gold sensor with platinum filigree, which we could estimate to be about 250 gold pieces. And she's able to lift that. That's the, uh, that's where's Northeast. That's the two gold bracelets, bracelets and ceremonial wand with chiseled ivory. Uh, Leaf and Syra. You would probably notice that this sarcophagus uh, is built onto hidden stone rollers. And remember, help actions. Ah, <laughs> uh, it does not. All 
That was their advantage. Two D twenty people in there, there we are. And it's the southeast one. Oh wait a minute. South west. Oh, technically it's the southeast, but that's okay. You you open all of them so you get all the border ones. Southwest sarcophagus contains a ewer uh, made of beaten gold worth about 25 gold pieces and walking stick worth about 75 gold pieces. Walking stick is made of a varnished ewe with a golden handle shaped like a scorpion. Uh, it's on rollers, hidden some hidden rollers. Say so athletic check. Kind of try to drag the coffin. And uh, it must have been on rollers because it seemed to move pretty smoothly. Slowly, it, you still had to give a little heft to it, but it seemed to be a lot easier to move than taking out the lids. Uh, underneath, you see a four foot square hole in the floor. And looking down, looking down, it looks like it uh, goes into a, another chamber. Which should be decimate probably about the same size. I mean, it, remember, uh, Rajesh should say that this was a tomb. Take 10 minutes. All right. Nothing's magical. Well, besides this, uh, both of the amulets on Lasser's neck. All right. Go down the hall. Uh, whoop. Yeah. Come on. There we are. Nope. Oh, come on. Yeah. There we are. It's me trying to fumble through uh, the reveal area. A blimp. This room looks to be about the, the same size as Miro's little wall decorated with rich pigments and inlays of semi-precious stones. A gilded sarcophagus stands atop a stone bier along the west wall.
Look, you haven't declared that you're the fourth fourth wall breaking uh, character, so stop breaking the fourth wall. One second. Let me not see if. Nope. Here you are. That's what I need. And I'll just take the, the previous uh, initiative count so you don't have to re roll. Boop. Rising from the rising from the sarcophagus is this uh, well feminine looking wraith. Let's see what it looks like. It's kind of like that. So Sova acts quickly. Roderick. Eighteen. Has, hasn't like everybody saved from that? Like I. That'll hit. That misses. That hits. You cross your arms and your other arms start whacking away. Boop, 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 boop. Or you're just flexing. I don't know how you do that, but. All right. Uh, I will go ahead and take that attack of opportunity. Oh, no, no. Mobile. Never mind. Ignore. All right. Leaf. I hit. Uh, it hits. Magic stone is the more powerful. 
Lassiter. Uh, it it felt it because it was probably because it's, uh, it's still considered a cantrip, which I consider to be magical. I'll hit. Nice. And he is guiding bolted, which means, uh, even though technically, so is also helping. So, but uh, I'm assuming there's a, there isn't anything else you wanted to do. All right. Princess of Kahim. Uh, is going to turn attack Haley. 15 hit Haley. All right. Knight of Crotic and need a constitution saving throw. Oh, wait. Hold on. That is not the right score, but it would still be the same roll. So. Con save totally makes it. It's fine. Alright. Haley has advantage on her attack. One way or another. Bubbles. Six. Does not save. Awesome. Doesn't seem to take as much damage as thought it would. For good measure. So she doesn't need to be reckless. Uh, I don't think he rolled that correctly. 1D, 20, uh, KH1. Plus one. Or 2D, two, two 20, KH1. You had the KH1 in the right place. Or, or KH1 right, you just said it in the wrong place. There we go. Not a crit, but close. But that definitely hits. Oh, shit. 28. How do you want to do this? As she's, she uh, swings her axe to cut right through the uh, spectral creature, uh, this wave of water seems to wash over it like it's cutting through water. And as it goes through, she, she finishes her swing, uh, a, a splash of water goes against Roderick. And the uh, wraith dissipates.
in the sarcophagus. I can help you. Yeah, you hear it all in your head. And a little struggle, but you do open the lid. Inside, uh, uh, there's a thin gold sheath covering uh, the sarcophagus, pried loose. That looks like it can be pried loose. Uh, inside, lying on top of um, what you would assume to be the original physical body, uh, withered and mummified corp, the withered and mummified corpse, you see a sword. Thank you. Thank you. You saved me. Yeah, you hear in your head, Roderick. Uh, you do also uh, end up bumping with your feet uh, something else that's next to the uh, coffin or next to the, the sarcophagus. My name's Don Bringer, by the way. Yeah, it's a feminine voice. Uh, although he, she's only, it's only speaking with Roderick at the moment. Is, is he is he talking about the voice because that was me and then all of a sudden Lasser says no that was me I mean I'm in this guy's hand I'm the sword I mean, considering I'm a weapon, I'm sure I'm magical. I, I just don't really know what I do. Uh, you find that it's called Dawnbringer, which you can find, you should be able to find in D&D Beyond. Lost to the ages in the Underdark, Dawnbringer appears to be a gilded longsword hilt. hilt. Well, grasping the hilt, you can use a bonus action. To, yeah, so you only have a hilt. You don't actually have a sword. Uh, you can use a bonus action to make a blade of pure radiance spring from the hilt or cause the blade to disappear. Don, Donbringer has all the properties of a sun blade. While holding the weapon, you can use an action to touch a creature with the blade and cast Lesser Restoration on that creature. Once used, the ability can't be used until the next dawn. Uh, forged by ancient sun worshippers, Dawnbringer is meant to bring light into darkness to fight creatures of darkness. It is, it is kind and compassionate to those in need, but fierce and destructive to its enemies. Long years lost in darkness has made Dawnbringer frightened of both the dark and abandonment. It prefers that its blade always be present and shedding light in areas of darkness. It is strongly resists being parted from its wielder for any length of time. 
So the blade is there. It's floating radiant blade. And it's just filling the room with light. It is considered a long sword, so technically, Roderick, you are not proficient with the sword. It was at the foot of the uh, sarcophagus. Uh, it is a long sword. You're a fighter, you should be able to. Martial weapons? Yeah, you should be able to use it. If you're proficient with martial weapons, you can use a long sword. Well, Technically, anybody can use it. It's just proficiency. Yeah. So, but if you're proficient with martial weapons, a longsword is a martial weapon. Hello. Uh, I'm, I'm Dawnbringer. What's your name? Everybody hears in your voice. This guy's a quiet one. Does he speak? Hi, Gage. I'd be glad glad to help you out. Just, just don't leave me. And 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 uh, uh, don't worry. I'll always be casting casting light for you. Yes, that's what I was made for. As long as we are smiting evil. I just don't like the dark. weapon loop or something. Uh, it, it seems to be some sort of box. You can't see it. Dawnbringer. Boom. Slings, I think, are simple weapons. Short, short. Yeah, I think short sword is a martial weapon. I think staves are simple weapons, like a quarter staff. No, it's a martial weapon. Yeah, it means you can wield it. Yeah, you can wield it either one-handed or two-handed. If you're wielding it one-handed, you do the eight. Ten is if you're doing it two-handed. Mm -hmm. 
is a versatile weapon. Yeah, you can feel along it. Uh, if there is a latch to it, it seems to be like some sort of chest. Uh, roll me an investigation check. Uh, you don't detect any traps. It's hard to tell also because it's visible, but... All right. You open it up and see nothing because it's invisible. All right. So you reach inside. Uh, part of your arm disappears. As you reach inside, uh, you, you, it doesn't feel like it was cut off or anything. Just you can't see it. Uh, and um, you feel around, you feel a lot of coins, uh, some sort of gems. Uh, there seems to be a beaded necklace of some sort and a couple of files. If you continue kind of investigating. Uh, once you would, like, your head would actually be inside the chest, like, if it's open, the barrier is basically anything that would be, like, inside the lid, uh, or actually inside the vessel, so being open, it's kind of now got, like, this right angle space, uh, so if you dip your head literally into it, uh, you can see some coins, a necklace, uh, and a couple of files. A couple of vials. Files, files, whatever. Potion stuff. Yeah, you probably, you feel like you could probably even tip it over to spill anything on it. Um, uh, one of the potions is rose-hued, uh, effervescent liquid. It contains one easy-to-miss bubble shaped like a heart. The other potion seems to be a uh, red liquid which uh, glimmers when, when you agitate it. So shake it a little. If you take the uh, 20 minutes and 12 seconds, uh, you will find that uh, the red liquid is, is probably what you would think of. It's a potion of healing. This one, it seems to be a little more powerful, being a greater potion of healing. The other one, the rose-hued effervescent liquid, with the bubble that's shaped like a heart, is a filter of love. So filter, filter of love. The necklace in there, so actually that's another half hour. So if you guys want to take a short rest while you're doing this. Uh, is a necklace of fireballs. Remember the deal. Just saying.
humid. You also find 4,000 4, silver pieces and 1,200 gold pieces. Elven zircons worth 50 gold pieces each. Mm -hmm. As payment, as payment, they're giving you the amulet of the devout. The amulet, and as additional payment, they were also allowing you to take any coin. They just wanted the items. I mean, technically, you could probably deal with them by saying, by giving it to them, then buying them back. And make this easy on myself. So you walk in, stone blocks standing against the western and eastern walls are carved with niches inside, which rest a, a dozen clay canopic jars. In the middle of the room rests a wide stone sarcophagus atop a black marble beer. The uh, lid of the sarcophagus is inlaid with dust-covered mosaics depicting uh, great floating cities high above a beautiful landscape. The lid uh, looks incredibly heavy.
Feels like stone. I'm gonna look around. Nothing happens. Okay. Third, roll me an investigation check. Uh, but first, Lasseter, I need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Save. You d easily dodge out of the way as the lid to the sarcophagus just flies off. Inside, uh, you find a, uh, looks like a life-size statue, uh, which you would assume to be, would have been the equivalent of the corpse that, that was in the uh, sarcophagus downstairs. Sculpted and painted to, appear, uh, to make it appear that uh, she's just sleep, sleeping comfortably. You don't see anything. You, you do not detect any magic. Nope. Uh, oh, wait a minute. The lid actually has some magic on it. What type of magic would it be? Uh, transmutation. If you, you examine the lid, uh, you expect, because it does seem to be absolute solid stone, that this should weigh a lot more than it seemed when Haley tried to move, move it off with uh, Roderick's help. Um, you're not really sure. Uh, the writing doesn't, doesn't really have like words. It just seems to be identifying the, uh, person who was tomb was supposedly entombed. Um, as the name is Birsus of Karem. Birsus of Karem. Or Brysus, I don't know. Brysus of Karem. Brysus of Ahem. Or something like that. Uh, sure. Although you haven't been doing great on your history rolls. <laughs> um, you recognize 
you you don't really recognize the person, but you recognize the the place the place uh, of Kaem. It's a, a Nether Ease uh, city. They were the floating cities from a long time ago during uh, before the calamity that. Reduce magic down to only having nine levels. <laughs> the death of Mistra. <laughs> Before the death of Mistra. So. It's very old. I want to use the the term. It, it was in the age of Arcan Arcanum, but that's a Xandria thing. <laughs> but it's the same type of thing. <laughs> Uh, they, they're just, um, they're shells. They contain, um, a dozen clay jars. Uh, desiccated organs. You, being a holy man, would recognize these as canopic jars. It, it is, it's, canopic jars are where organs are placed uh, during the process of mummification. A canopic jar. Yeah. Ancient times in Egypt, they would like take this like hook and stick it up the dead's nose and pull out their brain. As well as like the heart and I think a couple other organs. I'm not even sure what all organs remember what all organs, but The the uh, the statue that's in the uh, sarcophagus. Yeah, it's a statue. No, no, that was downstairs. That was downstairs and in, in, in the other room. But this one is a statue.
This statue. You haven't tried to move it or anything, do you? You just look at it. Okay, he, it doesn't budge. Lassiter, give me an insight check. Yeah, yeah. It's like, why is there a statue in the sarcophagus? <laughs> like, that's just weird. If anybody wants the insight to insight to, to try to figure out... <laughs> What he's why uh, to answer his question, you're welcome to, unless you already know. If you, if you could say why, then you could say it. But if you need a hint, I should say. Uh, Roderick and Syrah would, you would probably realize that this was a a uh, diversion. To, to make people think that this was the tomb, this was the body, and this was the, the sarcophagus for this person, but that, yeah, the, the real one would have been somewhere else. It, there is a possibility that this was trapped, but after killing the wraith and the other one, uh, probably uh, dispelled whatever magic that was. So it's no longer trapped, but there's nothing here anyway. So <laughs> unless you want a, a, a very light, very heavy stone. <laughs> be really awkward to, to lug around the lid to the sarcophagus and then be kind of weird, but if you could, it doesn't weigh as much as it normally is. You guys make out, make your way out of the tomb, uh, and everybody's still present. Still, uh, uh, pops over, sprays some spores. Cause what'd you find? What'd you find? Did you find any treasure? Yay! And kind of does a little dance. I'm glad you're okay, although although uh, a couple of you would look a little hurt. Uh, yeah, um... You, you could definitely look them over. They're just like any other wounds to, from what you can see. Uh, although the... Uh, I believe it has to be great war. I believe. But uh, you could probably intuit that you just need rest. You don't take care of it. Mm-hmm. Keep forgetting uh, little boar cats around. He, he's just been curled up. He's probably during during a couple of those things. He probably heard a little. <laughs> he boops her cheek with his snout.
That was a little bark ad. <laughs> For the purposes of the stream, it's a little bark cat. So following the dark lake, following the the back, start going back the way you came past the uh, 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 cavern that or the cave, cave corridor uh, that you uh, originally came through to arrive near the dark lake. Your instructions were to just follow the dark lake. <laughs> so you are now uh, wandering the uh, edges of the dark lake. And I uh, just need some objects when anybody wants to. All that's going to help out. Uh, any, anybody who wants to do it. Although technically it's not that hard because the instructions were too follow the dark lake <laughs> but finding a path because it's not all like right on the edge you sometimes have to go a little off the beaten path uh, around it isn't always going to be a nice beach along the dark lake uh, but in general you're able to easily uh, traverse and find a uh, nice location to bed it down for the night and I think that's a great place to stop and crazy enough i would definitely count that as uh going to sleep and waking up you would gain another level you you gain another level for successfully um traversing um the lost tomb Extra attacks? Uh, roll me a d20. Uh, you know, Borcat really wants you to, to keep working with him, so you're going to level another Warlock. Yeah. If you ask me, I'm going to have you roll, and it will be odds, cleric, reasons. Uh, wait a minute. That wasn't you that rolled. <laughs> okay. You're level five. But the, the question is, would you cast it on yourself or cast it on somebody else? Like the monk. <laughs> the monk who already has a whole bunch of extra attacks with, with the combination of attack, extra attack, hasted attack, fury of blows. <laughs> <laughs> Total of five attacks. Look, So that con and dex you need to stop. Especially if all of them hit. <laughs> yeah. 
Because of Constitution? Because of Constitution? Oh, weird. She has 55. That doesn't seem right. For some reason. Little bark head. Yeah, so Sarah, I believe, I believe if you have the ability, if you enabled uh, cantrip formulas, you could probably, you might be able to learn. Put. Uh, Eldritch Blast in your... Can you? No, it's not in the wizard spell list, so... She can't. Um, it, it still needs to be on the wizard spell list. Yeah. I would I would definitely rule that as, as if you took a like a, a a level of warlock, you would be able to to learn it. But you can learn that just from being a warlock. So you could use the spell scroll to cast it. Uh, you would still need to make a uh, spell casting ability check in order to cast it and then be able to utilize the two beams. Because how many beams is still based off of character level, not spell level, so. Yeah. Well, you at least know whichever direction is north, and you can recall things much better. Megan uh, baiting the uh, baiting the rib. I mean, he it technically wanted to kill you all. So if somebody was closer, might as well work on that one. Yeah, yeah. sadly, it doesn't have an acro tape like that. Yeah. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Uh, who might watch this in the future? Uh, because I don't think anybody was in the chat. So, but uh, we'll see you next time. Um, we'll, I'm not sure if it will be next week. We'll, we're going to discuss that offline. So.